Austin and Rachel, from Dad, from my heart, I want to say I love you both. I'm very proud of you. Uh, to Austin, I appreciate the way you've prayerfully and carefully chosen Rachel as your wife. And to Rachel, I say welcome to the Deathridge family. We're honored to have you a part of our family. We're so excited. We're happy for the both of you. Congratulations, and may God bless your future together. I love you both. Congratulations, Austin and Rachel. Rachel, welcome to the Deathridge family. We love you and we cannot wait to spend the rest of our lives with you and Austin, Nixon and Hayden. We love you. Austin and Rachel, congratulations on your big day. We're so happy to be here to celebrate with you. Rachel, welcome to the family. Austin, welcome to married life. We're so happy, we're blessed. To know you both, we're blessed to be family with you. Give us, give us lots and lots and lots of kids. Full quiver, full quiver. We love you, Rachel, welcome, and God bless, and we're looking forward to the future for both of you. Austin, Rachel, congratulations. I'm so happy for you. Rachel, you are stunning, the prettiest bride I've seen. Austin, take care of her. Rachel, keep him in line and I'm so excited to have a sister. Congratulations, I love you guys. Yay! Hi guys, I am so happy um, to be here on your special day. Rachel, I love you so much. You are such a great, awesome, beautiful person. Um, to witness you making such a great, big commitment. Um, I speak for Dad and I. We are so proud, for, proud of you. Um, we love you so much. Um, I love you. Austin, you are the best thing that's ever happened to all of us um, in our family for Rachel. Um, I just can't wait to see where you guys are in you know, 10, 20 years, um, still being little hot tamales together, um, shutting it down like you always do. Um, I love you guys. Congratulations, Austin and Rachel. I'm so excited for you guys in this new chapter in your life. I can't wait to see what the future holds um, and what God has in store for you guys. Love you. Hey man, just happy for you guys on your special day. Uh, Austin, me and you have been friends for a long time, so uh, seeing you happy again, it makes me happy inside. And I look forward to uh, hanging out with you guys. Um, not knowing Rachel for that long, but knowing that she makes you happy makes me happy and we're gonna be good friends. So once again, happy for you guys. Congrats you too on your wedding day. Uh, just make sure the key to marriage is communication. And uh, so happy for you guys. 
and good luck on your guys' journey uh, starting today. of her father and my dear friend, Brother Sean Mesher. Friends and family, we are gathered here today to witness the marriage of Austin and Rachel. But before we begin, I'm going to ask if we could all bow our heads and let's ask for Lord, the Lord's presence here today. Heavenly Father, we come to you today giving you praise, honor, and glory. We thank you for this time that you've allowed us to gather together to celebrate love, to celebrate, God, the marriage of Austin and Rachel. I pray today, Lord, that you would look down upon us, Lord, and bless us with your presence. We know, God, that you designed marriage to be a fulfilling uh, institution. And so we pray that you would lead them and guide them even now, Lord. I pray your favor and your blessing in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are gathered here this evening, beautiful setting, in the sight of God in the face of this company to join together this man and woman in holy matrimony, which is commended by the Lord to be honorable among all men and therefore is not to be entered into unadvisedly, lightly, but reverently, discreetly, and in the fear of God. And into this holy estate, Brother Austin Dethridge and Sister Rachel Mesher now come to be joined together. Brother Austin, Sister Rachel, this is incredible. Your ship has arrived. Rachel, your knight in shining armor now stands before you. Austin, the queen of your life, you now hold by the hand. Every so often, we as pastors get to participate in beautiful celebrations like this this evening. And so <clears throat> I want to thank you both for allowing us to be a part of this great and memorable day in your life. Just speaking to Austin a few minutes ago, prior to the beginning of the ceremony, and he brought out a uh, envelope, manila envelope, and he said, uh, Pastor, we need to take care of this. And I said, yes, sir. Uh, right after the ceremony, we will do that. What that envelope contained was a marriage license. And it is something that is given to you by the state of California. And um, you will send it back to the state of California. Everyone that has been married in the state of California has one of these things called a marriage license. Some folks put it up in a nice frame so that everyone can see it. Some may want to lock it away in a lockbox so it's protected. Some just allow the county clerk to take care of business as usual. But regardless what we do with this piece of paper, all we, although we understand very clearly that it is a legal and binding document, I want to 
tell you a little secret here tonight. This is kind of just between us and everybody else who's here, obviously. But it's really just a piece of paper. That's all it is. And that piece of paper is not a marriage. In fact, as beautiful as this setting is here this evening, and as beautiful as this time of a wedding is, it's not a marriage. Don't get me wrong, it's, it's awesome. It's powerful. I felt the emotion of the moment standing back there with Rachel. Rachel, thank you for letting me fill in for Dad tonight. Very dear friend in my life. This is a wonderful time, but as good as it is to be here, you cannot get confused with the fact that this is a wedding and not a marriage. What makes a marriage is what comes next. Brother Dethridge mentioned to me tonight, just before we started, he said, uh, you're the one that has the work to do here tonight. And I said, oh, no, no, not really. It's Austin and Rachel that began the process of working together to build a beautiful family in the Lord. What makes a marriage is what we do tomorrow, the next day, weeks and months and years that follow. The Lord said, greater love hath no man than this, than that a man would lay down his life for his friends. And I hope that you never actually have to lay down your life for one another, but I can promise you that on a daily basis, you will have to lay down yourself and your own self-will for the sake and cause of one another. Because here's the truth. Chances are there are going to be difficulties that will arise. There will be challenges that you will be faced with. But marriage is not a piece of paper. It's a gift. It's a gift from God, first of all. It's his institution. Therefore, you're entering into something tonight that belongs to the Lord. You might want to occasionally remind yourself of that when you refer to our marriage, my marriage. It really isn't your marriage because this is something that God created and you're entering into this with him. And as long as your marriage belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're putting yourself in a place where the purpose of God can be fulfilled in your marriage, in your family. Sister Rachel, today you will give yourself to Brother Austin. Brother Austin, today you will give yourself to Sister Rachel. And this is the greatest wedding gift that can ever be given. You are literally giving your life to one another. That is what makes a marriage. It must be both of you. It must be a decision that you make on a daily basis. And with that gift to each other and with that shared mutual love for the Lord and for one another, I know that your marriage will last through the ages and will stand as a witness to all of the love of God shed abroad in your hearts. The relation of a husband and wife is most sacred when it becomes as two souls with a single thought, two hearts that literally beat for one purpose. The unselfish blending of two lives, the literal union of two natures. And if you both have duly considered this relationship of which you are about to enter this evening, let it be known by the joining of your right hands. Kind of like shaking hands, kind of like praise the Lord, sister. Praise the Lord, brother. There you go. <laughs> what an awesome privilege it is to stand before this couple this evening. Uh, Rachel, I think that you came into our lives when you were about nine years old. Something like that. And we have had so many wonderful, wonderful times through the years, there's been some really tough times, too, that we've had to work through. But, uh, Brother Austin, i got to tell you, man, you're getting one of the best. I believe that Rachel is going to be an absolutely wonderful, 
lady of God in your life and a wife to you and mommy to your boys. And I believe that God has prepared her for this day. And I believe in her. I've seen God use her in a special way. And if the both of you apply your lives to the Lord and continue to put God first in ministry, there's no telling what God can do with both of you together. Brother Austin, I haven't had the opportunity to get to know you like I have, Rachel, for obvious reasons. But I've known your family for many, many years. In fact, I remember your father as a young Bible quizzer sitting shoulder to shoulder with his brother back in the day. They used to strike fear in the hearts of the Hanford Bible quizzing team. But I've always loved and appreciated the Deathridge family. I've always been treated outstanding with great hospitality and genuine kindness. And I know that you come from good stock. I know that you're a good man and you have a good heart. And it makes me feel good today to give Rachel to you as man and wife. Brother Austin, you are about to take upon yourself a pure resolve, a solemn vow, incurring grave and lasting responsibilities. The woman of your choice, Rachel, will now become the partner of your life, the co-heir of all of your possessions, the queen of your home. In no other way could she so manifest her love for you but doing what she's doing tonight, saying, I will, if necessary, leave all previous ties of life, sacrificing perhaps the companionship of friends and people that are close. And all of these I will sacrifice to share the joys of life with you, Austin, and the sorrows of life as they come. With you, Rachel will now abide. She will be yours, and she will live each day for the Lord and for you. Sister Rachel, you also will assume grave and lasting responsibilities. <clears throat> he whom you are about to wed this evening, he will look to you for comfort in the hour of his trial. When he needs a shoulder to cry on, yours will be that shoulder. And your smile will be the brightest thing that can happen in any day of his life. Your voice will be the sweetest mu music to his spirit, and your industry will be his greatest wealth. Your economy is safe steward, and your voice is faithful, confidant, and counselor. You see, we don't know what tomorrow holds, and if money fails and cupboards are empty, if disagreements arise, you know, she's beautiful tonight, and he's absolutely handsome. But 50 years from now, she will still be as beautiful to you. But as age comes and challenges may arise, there is one thing that must remain resolute, solid, and prevail at all costs, and that is the love that the two of you share for one another. And so I'm going to lead you through these vows. These are more than just promises. These are more than just suggestions, but this is something, this is a vow that you will make tonight before this great company of witnesses and also before the Lord. To you, Brother Austin, take Rachel, who now stands by your side, to be your lawful and wedded wife. Do you promise to love her in sickness and in health? for richer or for poorer, for better or for worse, and keep the only unto her as long as you both shall live? I do. do you promise that you will at all times conduct yourself toward her as becometh a considerate, loyal, and loving husband? I do. Rachel, do you take Austin, who now stands by your side, to be your lawful and wedded husband. She paused for a minute there. <laughs> do you promise to love him in sickness and in health, for richer or for poorer, 
for better or for worse, and keep thee only unto him as long as you both shall live. Amen. Much more absolute. <laughs> Do you promise that you will at all times conduct yourself toward him as becometh a considerate, loyal, and loving wife? Songwriters and philosophers have written about it. Scripture gives us many references concerning it. But it is simply that life is compared to sailing on the sea of time as we journey toward our ultimate destination. The sailor's hitch is what they call it. Some refer to it as the sailor's knot. I looked that up today. It was pretty amazing. The sailor's knot is the most versatile knot on earth, and it is the strongest. It is capable of being tied to literally anything of any shape or size. Its limitations are few, and yet its strength is great. And in speaking to you all last night, I was, I was very, very impressed to note that you had chosen this particular part of this ceremony, bringing the nautical theme into it, because um, one of the most incredible days of my life was being at your father's retirement ceremony when he retired as a Navy chief. And we know that the sailor's knot or the sailor's hitch is something that all sailors must learn. And so this evening, we are going to enter into a time where they are literally going to tie the knot. God bless you. Take my hand and 
Bless your marriage. So I'll bow our heads one more time. Heavenly Father, again, we're so grateful and thankful. As Austin and Rachel have exchanged vows and have committed themselves before you, before each other, and Lord, before this body of witnesses, I pray, Father, that you would bless them, lead them, and guide them. Help them, mighty God, to practice love for one another, to serve one another, to have empathy for one another. I pray, Lord, that you would be with them, that you would lead them and guide them. As they have made this decision and have coveted with you today, I pray, Lord, that you would bless them. God, give them many years of love, of joy, and happiness. Let them enjoy each other, Lord. Let them enjoy their life together. Let them enjoy you together. I pray, God, your blessing on them. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, Brother Austin, Sister Rachel, here we are, the moment that you have waited for. Rachel, you look very, very beautiful tonight. In fact, I've, I've never seen an ugly bride. I've seen a few groomsmen that could use a little help. But Austin, you're holding your own, bud. The vows have been given, received, and responded to. The, the knot has been tied. That was very beautiful, by the way. The knot has been tied. Pastor Caracelas has prayed a powerful prayer of blessing over your marriage. And so now at this time, it is my great honor as an ordained minister of the gospel and according to the laws of the state of California to pronounce you, Brother Austin Dethridge, and you, Sister Rachel Mesher, legally married, husband and wife, what therefore the Lord had joined together, let no man put asunder. Brother Austin, I, I, I don't know if you've kissed Rachel, but look at that. <laughs> you may kiss the bride. <laughs> Uh, that's right. Let's give him a big round of applause. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor tonight that I present to you Brother Austin and Sister Rachel, legal, legally married man and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Austin Dethridge. Can we give them another round of applause?